Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So today's job is to cut a one inch wide keyway, 10 and a half inches long inside of this part right here. And we're going to be doing that on what is my favorite machine in the entire shop, the Mori 12 inch vertical shaper. Now I bought this machine a couple of years ago during the pandemic and had a hard time getting it out of where it was, um, but I absolutely love it. It's been an awesome machine. The little bit I've used it, it has 12 inch stroke and it's all adjustable, We've got different feeds. Um, but last week's video, we had problems inside the feed box with the oil system, and I hope that prompted you guys all to tear into your oil systems just to make sure they're working properly. Um, I was fortunate enough to get it working, um, but there is some wear in there, and there will be some, eventually, uh, we'll be tearing into that further and doing some repairs. And if you remember, this is the tool holder I built a while back. And this is the part. Now this part is from one of my new customers. Uh, I picked this customer up last year. They've been outsourcing this to a different shop and they've been having problems with the consistency of the keyways being the proper width. Um, they are one inch plus or minus one thousandths. And this one is four thousandths over, so it's one inch five thousandths. We're gonna attempt to cut another keyway on one of these other spots and see how it goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up. Um, I'll do a time lapse of it and I'll do a voiceover explaining what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And let's get this job going. So here I'm just uh, getting the tool height set, adjusting the stroke, setting the tool height and the making sure the ram doesn't hit the part, which I got very close on this. Now I'm indicating the um, vertical straightness of the tool to make sure it's absolutely true to the ram and now I got the the uh, indicator on the table just setting perfect center with the tool so indicating it in to center getting the fine tune to clamp the table now I'll put the uh, indicator up on the tool and indicate the part to center and you can see there at first it was a little bit off now it's getting closer and the next thing I'll do is I'll grab my clamps once it's close and then clamp it into place um, lightly and then fine tune it one more time. And then I'll clamp her down and do a final test of everything. So just checking, fine tuning as we go. Now I'm going to put a little die cam there and uh, I'll scribe a few lines just to make sure we're, we're all good. Do some fine checkup. Make sure everything's good, and away we go. All right, so that was a very lengthy process, and I hope you understand what was going on there. Um, and I got my line scribed. I got her lined up the best I can. Um, just looking at the keyway that they had cut in here, I don't know if it's clear or easy to see, but it is crooked as all get out. So not only is it oversized, but it's crooked. Um, now, this is not my one-inch um, cutter. This is a three-quarter inch. We're going to take the center out first, see how it goes, and then we're going to go ahead and start cutting in and get the uh, one inch. So we'll rough it out with three-quarter and then finish it off with the one inch. Well, let's go ahead and start this spindle, this, we have the ram up, and hope for the best. Boy, that is tight. I know if I start doing these uh, regularly, there'll be a new fixture built and, and it'll go a lot better. So let's uh, see what happens. Ease it in until we touch off. And... and we just touched and it looks Looks good, I see a little metal on each side. So it looks like we're absolutely square. And it's hard to tell there, but all right. Now, since the feed is not super consistent on this machine, I'm gonna take it in and gently bring it in myself, one thou at a time. Thank you. 
I'm going to give the feed a try. Because it seems like it was cutting pretty good at a few thou a, a feed. Yeah, it looks like we're three to three to four per rat stroke. That seems a little aggressive. So I'll just have to be careful. So unfortunately, I don't have a really good way to measure this because the tool is in the way here. Um, I, I just don't have enough travel and I need to build an actual proper tool holder for these if I do them in the future, if this goes good and the customer accepts it. But what I'm gonna do is just take my caliper and measure the wall thickness of the old hole. And right now it is 210 thousandths. Let's just see where this one is. 280. So I got 70 to go. So we'll go ahead and just keep on cutting another 70. All right, I stopped about 20 thousandths shy of what I think is going to be my finish, and we'll just quickly measure it and see where I'm at. And actually, 20 thousandths to go. So we'll go ahead and just get that last little bit. Now, you're probably all wondering why this doesn't have a clapper box. And it wouldn't work on a vertical shaper. Clapper box utilizes gravity and the vertical shaper doesn't really work that way. So, so I, I said this, this is such a fun machine to run.
I can't tell you guys how much I enjoy this machine. <laughs> so we'll just let that stroke out a little bit and, and clean up the bore. Back her out and shut her off. Oh, I guess I got to run it up by hand to get it exactly where I want it. There. Now I need to change out my cutter to my one inch, and then we'll clean that up, open that up to the one inch. We're just going to go ahead and shut that off while we change out the bit. And these generally, these are a Morrison key seater cutter, and these generally come about uh, two to four thousandths oversized. So what I did was I just hit it on the belt grinder and just took it down. So I am now nine or point nine nine nine. So I am within the tolerance of the part. Let's see if I can get this out now. Definitely not a lot of clearance here. I'm gonna have to run that down and utilize the hole. And when I say this is one of my favorite machines to run, I mean that. This thing is, is really just a blast to run. Come on, I got a bunch of crap in the hole. Don't you hate it when there's crap in your hole? There we go, that should do it. That did it. And if you're still wondering about the tool holder, I made this here in the shop. Um, there is a video on the build of this. Uh, it was last year and it just took me that long to get to the to this job, so not that this was a rush at all. Um, I think they said they only do a few of these a year. This is a sample to see if I could do it. Um, and quite honestly, it looks like I might be able to do it. Well, I got it out, and actually I don't see any wear on it. It looks really good. I'll have to clean it up more, look it over further, but here is our bigger one. Let's go ahead and put that in. Oh, I think I got the camera at a position where you guys will be able to see good. At least I hope you can. Where am I here?
Well, let's uh, clean this up just a little bit here. And this is a one inch gauge block. So let's see how I did. I measured it already and it was, it was right on and it's gonna be a snug fit to get this guy started, but oh, nice, nice. So, wow, that's, that's a beautiful fit. I am going to uh, get this out of here and get it back to the customer for inspection and we'll see how it goes. So this one on the bottom is the one I just cut. 10 and a half inches long, one inch keyway. So I will get this to the customer and uh, pending their review of it and how it goes, I may get this job on a repeat basis and we'll do another video with making the fixture if I get the job. So until next time, remember, I love this machine. This thing is so much fun. If you ever get a chance to buy one, buy one, a vertical shaper. And until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.